Hi everyone, in this topic we're just going to be looking at esters, a group of chemicals that are used in the production of perfumes. And I'm going to focus a little bit more on perfumes and thinking about the properties that they would need to have and how you can actually make esters, the chemicals that go into making those perfumes smell like they do. So let's start with this word here, the ester. An ester is a chemical that provides a scent. So these chemicals provide scents or smells, if you like. Now, they can occur naturally. You can get natural esters, but they can be made synthetically. So synthetic means sort of artificially, if you like. They are used in foods like certain sweets, for example. So those... Um, I can't remember the name, the ones that are sort of half red, half yellow, usually taste of like rhubarb and custard, those kind of sweets can use esters to give them that kind of scent. But in this video, we're going to focus in on their use in perfumes. So let's think about the properties that perfumes would need to be have or need to have if they were to be used and sold like they are. So let's think of some of the key properties. So firstly, you would need something that would evaporate easily. It's an essential property. Perfume particles reach noses and people can smell it. So if you don't have a if you don't have a chemical that evaporates easily then it kind of defeats the purpose. Equally you would need that perfume and the products that it contains to be non-toxic That's essential, that it wouldn't poison anyone wearing it. Now, naturally, even if you wear perfume, that doesn't say that the person wearing it isn't going to sweat. So the last thing you would want is for this perfume to react with water. So that's the third property. You'd want this perfume to not react with water. If you're going to wear a perfume and apply it to the skin, you're not going to want it to wash off very easily. Again, that would defeat its purpose. So, insoluble, so not dissolving in water, would be a desirable property. And to be able to put it on the skin, you'd want it to be a non-irritant. So in fact, I'm going to put that next to number two. So where I say non-toxic, you'd equally want it to be a non Irritant. You wouldn't want it to irritate the skin, otherwise it's unlikely to sell. Now, you can smell perfumes because they evaporate when put on the skin, and that's because the skin ultimately is warm. So, we have particles of perfume in a sort of liquid suspension that when heated, because we said that the skin is warm when heated, will gain kinetic energy and those high energy particles will eventually leave the liquid and more particles leave the liquid than return. That creates a sort of vapour, that's how the perfume scent or smell if you like is transmitted. So let's think about making esters because esters are needed to actually create that scent or smell. So it's an essential component of these perfumes. Now esters can be made by reacting an organic acid with an alcohol. And that produces an ester and water. You can use a drop of something like concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst or something to speed up the reaction. But an organic acid and an alcohol is what we would need. So let's put the equation down here. So an organic acid and an alcohol would go to create a ester and water. So it's the ester we're after. Let's think of an, an example. So an example of an organic acid could be butanoic acid. So if we were to use butanoic acid
and an alcohol, and in this example, let's use methanol. What we'd create is water, but we'd also create our ester, which in this example would be methyl butanoate. So the ester we would create is methyl butanoate. So in, in another example, if we use ethanoic acid, the alcohol would be ethanol, and we'd be able to create ethyl ethanoate ester. Now, you're not going to be asked necessarily to recite all of the names of the acids and alcohols that we could use in the esters they would create. But it's important to note that each one would create a different kind of scent. So in this example, butanoic acid with methanol gives a sort of pineapple scent. Ethanoic acid and ethanol will create an ester that gives a scent of pear drops, if you like, and that marzipan, very distinctive marzipan scent, comes from reacting benzoic, or benzoic acid rather, with methanol to create methyl benzoate. So fundamentally, the key thing to remember in this is that an organic acid and an alcohol will create the ester we want and water, and it's that ester that will provide that scent or smell. Now, interestingly, just to finish off, esters can be used as solvents. Now, as we know, we know that solvents are sort of liquids that a solute can dissolve in to form a solution. Ethyl ethanoate, so ethyl ethanoate, can be used as nail varnish remover. So we can actually use this ester as well as providing a smell in a perfume. We could use it as nail varnish remover. Now, nail varnish is insoluble in water, so water can't be used to take off varnish. A nail varnish remover would need to be used. So that's just one extra example of how, how we can use those esters. So, as well as in the manufacture of pro, uh, perfumes, we can use them in nail varnish remover because esters can act as solvents. Things like nail varnish that doesn't dissolve in water can dissolve in the ester. Now, to just finish, I want to make a point about something called volatility. I did refer to it before to explain how the perfume is able to diffuse, if you like, how that smell can diffuse across a room how the perfume evaporates and spreads. And it's to do with something called volatility. Volatile liquids evaporate easily. And perfumes we call volatile. Now what that means is that they readily change from a liquid to a gas. There are only weak attractive forces between those particles in the substance and these forces are overcome easily. So particles with enough energy can escape from that liquid. So I just wanted to finish by mentioning that word because it's only really seen at higher level. At foundation, you tend not to look at the concept of volatility. But the reason why those perfumes evaporate easily is because they are volatile liquids. They can change from a state of a liquid to a gas quite easily because of weak attractive forces. Okay, now in the actual chemistry unit, I believe this topic stems onto animal testing because quite clearly we can't produce all these perfumes without testing them first. And you can imagine that that testing on animals would be a very sort of delicate, sensitive subject matter. And one that um, there's so many different ethical concerns to think about. So I'm, I'm going to look at animal testing in a separate video. It does stem from this one, but in this I just wanted to highlight esters and the manufacture of perfumes. Okay, so I hope all that helps.